Hey everybody, this is Perch. And I mean, not a week goes by that you don't see the argument of are comics selling better? Are they not selling better? I, I've said this before, and it real and you take in mind, this is the guy who does the sales analysis videos, who goes through all the details of, of where the sales are. At the end of the day, the sales don't terribly matter to you, the fan, the customer. It's do you like the story? If you like it, it you're selling terribly, but you still like it. If you don't like it, and it's selling awful. Like, I mean, I guess I, I don't even know what that scenario looks like. You're not reading the comic and it's not selling well. Okay. Congratulations. Nobody wins, I, I guess. But I, I, that it, to your enjoyment, it doesn't matter. Now, to the publishers, for sure, it matters. You know, you have to have money in order to survive. I think if, if uh, Marvel and DC were not propped up by Disney and, uh, and Time Warner, Warner Media, rather, not Time Warner, uh, Warner Media, uh, Discovery. Discovery Warner Media Incorporated, LG. <laughs> anyway, um, if if they were not propped up, you would see a very different strategy, for sure. I, I can guarantee you one thing. I, I don't know about Marvel for sure, but DC, you would see you would see a lot less titles. If they didn't have the backing, they would not be doing this this approach they're doing to chase Marvel. They would just be like worry about you know creating a sustainable, profitable business. But but anyway, but that's neither here nor there. But. I got to break it down in this way because I get emails from time to time and, and, uh, comments in the, in, you know, in the comment area and they'll, they'll say things like, no, well, how do you know the Krakoa era isn't selling better even more lately? And somebody at, somebody is doing this. I don't know who, I don't know whether this is some kind of article on bleeding cool or some, or, or what, but somebody has started to perpetuate the storyline of comics are doing better than they ever have in the history of all comics now i'm not just talking in the last five years i'm talking ever comics are doing better than they ever 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 have and on top of that the uh things like the krakoa era is the highest selling x-men it's ever been ever well let me take the emotion out of it. Obviously, I'm not a fan of the Kirkwood era, but, but again, that's like I said at the beginning, that's neither here nor there. Okay, we're, we're talking about sales and facts, crazy things. And that, that just is, is factually not true. And I'll give you a very quick example of, of why it's not true and why it's not even remotely true. And if you've tangled up your love for, you know, the X-Men or Marvel or whatever it happens to be, if you've, if you've tangled that love up in a perception that the sales are high, I'm going to explain, like, that's, a, you need to get over that. It's a silly thing. So, in, in the most basic, you know, explaining this to my daughter, except both my daughters are, are smart enough to, to have gotten this already. They wouldn't need this level of explanation. This would be like explaining to, you know, my daughters five years ago. If you have 100 stores, 100 stores, carrying a comic, in this case, carrying the X-Men, and every single one of those hundred stores buys five copies of it. All right. Five times a hundred, that's 500. 500 copies have sold. Now, if you take away 90 of those stores, so now only 10 stores are selling a comic, but those 10 stores are, you know, actually ordering 10 copies, not five copies. 10 times 10 equals 100. 100 is less than 500. It, this, is, this is really basic math. When there was the newsstand, comics were carried everywhere, all over the place. You could go into gas stations and grocery stores and, I mean, everywhere. I do remember comics at airports. By the way, I'm going to die, and it's going to be like 500 years from now, the world will move on to some kind of you know, apocalyptic uh, nightmare, and that Hudson shop in the airport will still be there, selling shit for twice the price for no apparent reason. Anyway, sorry, it's all all five percent of you that travel all the time are la are laughing hilariously right now. Anyway, uh, once upon a time, the stuff was sold everywhere. Today, this stuff is not sold everywhere. Stuff is only sold in the direct market. If we're talking about floppies, if we're talking about trade paperbacks. There are more. Somebody sent a photo of an omnibus at Target, which is just uh, astounding. But anyway, the comics aren't sold as many places. It's, it's, it's not the same. It's not like it was 
30 years ago. Now, yes, the newsstand had returnability. And in the simplest terms, it meant that what wasn't sold could be returned. And you know, the, the newsstand, the grocery store, whatever, would get their money back. But even if you put it this way, again, back to, back to our map. If you have 100 stores, each one ordering five copies, okay? 500 copies sold. Oh, but wait. You know, each of those stores returned two. They only actually sold three. Okay, well, three times 100 equals 300. Once again, we go back to the 10 of today, the direct market. 10 stores selling 10 copies equals 100. 300 still higher than 100. People act, and, and I've seen this, um, I've seen people on, on the beat, not that I've, I beat up on them more than I should, but uh, I've seen people on that website talk about how it's impossible to ever know how many comics were sold through the newsstand. It's not impossible. It's not impossible at all. It turns out that when you have a product and you sell it, you have to write that information down for taxes and all kinds of, that information does exist mentioned like two years ago, I got this big kind of treasure trove of a bunch of uh, spreadsheets from the 70s and 80s, of the newsstand, and what they sold. But regardless of all that, I mean, you know that proof, again, you're a journalist, you know proof of what is sold, both because of common sense, and also, if right now you leave this video and you go to Google, and you type in newsstand comics, no, you put comic books newsstand returnability into Google and then head over to image search. And what you're looking for is something that looks like a spreadsheet. You're looking for a bunch of numbers on a column and you will find it. You'll find several of them because over the years, people have posted images. There's been articles written about how the newsstand worked and you'll see with your own two eyes things from Marvel in the 70s and 80s showing units sold, units returned. And in many cases, you see things like 250,000 units sold, 75,000 returned. Okay, once again, we're going to have to rely on our old friend Matt. 250,000 minus 75,000 equals 175,000. I was almost going to do like 150 just to see if people are paying attention. Like, hey, you can't add. Anyway, 175,000. Okay, now we could take a little trip over to Comicron or wherever, and we could look at you know pre-pandemic numbers and say, oh, here's a copy of here's New Mutants selling at thirty-eight thousand copies. Thirty-eight thousand is less than one hundred and seventy-five. This is less. I, 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 and again, this is not. This actually, you, you could make this argument, and you can you can solve this not dealing with any aspect of the culture war, because quite frankly, it's much easier than that. More stores equals more products sold. The end. The, the fucking end. I, I, you, we could certainly, you could absolutely make the, make the claim, and, and correctly, that, well, you know, the, the content isn't appealing to the right audience, and, you know, the, one of the reasons why the newsstand flourished is because a lot of the content was seen as, you know, good for kids, and I mean, you could make a million different arguments about why comics are in fewer stores, some of which definitely has to do with content. But at the end of the day, fewer stores equal fewer sales. It's not that complicated. None of this is that complicated. And for what it's worth, again, if, you, if you're sitting there and you're loving, I don't know, what is, uh, if you're loving the, the latest five-issue miniseries out of Marvel, and it's, it's for you, then good. Your only care about the numbers and sales is that the comic isn't doing so dog shit terrible that, you know, you're not going to get the comic anymore. You should actually be a little invested into hoping it's selling. Because if you really love something, it's, it's like that, uh, what, X Factor book that uh, Leah Williams was doing. They announced it was canceled. You'd be like, oh my God, how could this, this is the best book Marvel is publishing. How could it be canceled? This really makes me mad. It's like, well, dumbass. It dropped below 30,000 copies a month. That's it. That's why. Somebody reached out, um, I don't know, like a month ago, and like, well, you don't know if that's why. 
you don't know. I mean, Leah Williams, uh, you know, was was getting some work over at DC, and so it, it's also possible that she just wasn't interested in the title anymore. It's like, oh, really? Is that why she posted, uh, you know, online that uh, she's sorry to see it end? It it ended before she was ready, and you know, she uh, she's disappointed that it was uh, it was canceled because she was leaving it. That's that's what people do when they're like, oh, I think I'm going to wrap this title up and go to a new thing, and then I'm going to post all over the place how disappointed I am that it was canceled. Yeah, that makes sense. Completely. Um, if you love that book, though, you got to buy it. You have to encourage your shop to order more. you got to get friends involved. I mean, like, look, if, if you are loving a comic right now from Marvel or DC, and you happen to notice that the sales are 25000 20000 18000 that book's getting canceled. I don't care what's in it. I don't care if it's uh, I don't care if it's good old eighty style action or the wokest wokeathon woke shit woker. <laughs> I don't care. It's getting canceled at that number. But overall, look, the sales aren't better today. They just aren't. There's no way they could be. That's the that's the key sense. There's there's no way they actually can be better. When you were in, I mean, hell, when you were in, the newsstand dwarfed the direct market. You're talking a thousand stores to, to five. The math I used of, of 110 is not even remotely accurate. It was, it was not, you know, one out of every 10 stores was a comic book shop. Think about that for a moment. You're in every gas station, all of them. Turns out there's a lot of those. They were at every supermarket. There were not, there's not a comic book, comic book shops are not once like Starbucks around every corner. There's just, there's a lot less. When there's a lot less, there's a lot less places to sell product. When there's less places to sell product, less copies get sold. I, I get the, I get somebody is perpetuating this of like, you know, the, the Krakoa era of the X-Men sold more copies than Jim Lee and Chris Claremont's X-Men number one. The one that sold six, what, 6.5 million copies? Uh, no. No, that's not true. Unless you are doing the weirdest possible math and taking every single issue ever sold in the Krakoa era, adding them all up together, and pitting that against one comic. You, yeah, that, you can do that. That works. That is true. Every single copy over of X-Men over the last four plus years combined did sell more copies than Jim Lee, Chris Claremont's X-Men number one, but just barely. So, yay! Anyway. <laughs> it, it, this isn't that complicated. Thanks for listening.